Assalamu alaikum. This is the fourth lecture in Interiotic Balloon Pump. We will speak about indication, contraindication, some troubleshooting, uh, and how to solve it. In the previous lecture, we, we explained uh, the problem related to timing error and uh, how to diagnose. Today, we will try uh, to um, solve this issue and see its effect on hemodynamics. Just a reminder. Uh, for this uh, picture of interaortic balloon pump one to one frequency, uh, full uh, assessed. If we see this picture, we can't uh, uh, assess the timing or the problem in uh, inflation or deflation. We need to go to one to two. Then we will start our interpretation for the waveform. If we need to start to interpret the waveform in of interaortic balloon pump, we should put the frequency one to two. And after that, we should uh, searching for three ups and three downs, one, two, three. And it's very important to know that, that uh, this is called diastolic augmentation and should be supra-systolic uh, pressure. Uh, uh, it's the classic part of classic classic augmentation uh, for, uh, uh, for interaortic balloon pump. But here, if we come for the second, uh, for this uh, slide, we will find that uh, this is diastolic augmentation uh, is named suboptimal diastolic augmentation. That means there is no uh, good diastolic augmentation and that diastolic pressure is less than uh, systolic uh, pressure. And that means it's not proper uh, diastolic augmentation. However, if the patient has a suboptimal diastolic augmentation, that means uh, also, that there is an increasing in mean arterial blood pressure, and to some extent, there is benefit of uh, interaortic. Still, there is benefit of interaortic balloon pump, but still not fully optimized. So, why we have patient with diastolic uh, uh, suboptimal diastolic uh, augmentation, uh, and what's factor affecting it? Uh, for uh, diastolic augmentation, we had three factors: patient, catheter, and pump. For example, if the patient's heart rate is tachycardic, that will reduce left ventricular filling and also shortening the time for balloon inflation. Uh, the second thing is the stroke volume, very low uh, stroke volume, so less uh, volume ejected in, into the aorta, this volume displaced during the diastole, and that means less uh, augmentation. Also, the patient is hypovolemic. Uh, mean arterial blood pressure, if the patient mean arterial blood pressure is less than uh, 40 millimeter mercury, so the augmentation will be very less, and there is no uh, no uh, uh, good afterward. And systemic vascular resistance and severely vasodilatation and severe vasoconstriction, all of this will affecting the proper diastolic augmentation of the patient. In fact, is the castor itself for uh, not fully exist the castor, uh, fully exist the sheath or unfolded castor or kinking catheter, the interaortic balloon size is very small for the for the patient. In proper position, if there is a, a presence of a helium leak or low concentration of helium inside uh, the cylinder, pump mean in proper timing or a position of interaortic balloon augmentation uh, augmentation control is not proper for the patient. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, if patient has early inflation, it's timing error. So what is the effect of hemodynamics? If we have early inflation, this means the aortic valve uh, will cl close premature. Closing of aortic valve premature lead to increase left ventricle and diastolic volume and pressure. And all of these will reflect on pulmonary, capillary wedge pressure, uh, also increasing after load and exaggerate the presence of aortic regurgitation. If we have early inflation, so we will make it late by compressing this till we have proper, uh, proper um, uh, curve on the anti-aortic balloon pump. Then a uh, second, uh, second part is late inflation, and that will affecting will lead to suboptimal augmentation. And also, uh, uh, if the, there's delay in the inflation of the balloon, so it will delay in the displacement of the blood into the periphery and the coronary artery, so it will lead to suboptimal coronary perfusion. Solving the issue by uh, by pressing to uh, the the balloon to be more earlier uh, till we get the curve uh, right curve. 
as we as we mentioned before, the coronary arteries are perfused during inflation of the balloon. So early deflation will lead to suboptimal coronary uh, perfusion, and may uh, uh, lead to retrograde coronary and carotid flow uh, that lead to um, angina, uh, anginal pain. Uh, also, can lead to suboptimal after load reduction. And all of these increase myocardial oxygen demand. So as to solve this issue, we will make the deflation slightly late uh, from later on the console. And uh, this uh, uh, can be judged uh, through uh, the waveform, arterial waveform on the console. If there is a late deflation, so it will affect the after load reduction will be absent as the, as the uh, still, uh, the balloon is deflate is inflated, so and that will increase uh, myocardial oxygen consumption, and the, uh, still the high pressure inside the uh, aorta will lead to a decrease uh, or delay the opening of aortic valve, so that will lead to prolongation of isovolumetric uh, vol contraction, and that will affect left ventricle ejection. Uh, will not uh, the left ventricle will not eject. To solve this issue, we will uh, press on earlier de uh, deflation till we get the proper shape of the curve. What are indications of uh, anti-aortic flow pump, acute coronary syndrome, complicated heart failure, or during cardiac surgery? Uh, the first is indication is acute coronary syndrome, uh, which can be used in reflectable unstable angina, bending infarction, post uh, infarction uh, or uh, threatening uh, extension of myocardial infarction, complication of acute MI, especially if uh, it's a mechanical complication, support for the diagnosis of BCI, uh, ischemic uh, ischemia, which can lead to intractable ventricular arrhythmias. In the complication of heart failure, it's in cardiogenic shock, refractory left ventricular heart failure, cardiac contusion with, with left ventricular dysfunction, cardiac and non-cardiac surgery, a prophylaxis support in preparation for cardiac surgery, especially in patients with left main lesion, weaning from cardiopulmonary bypass, there's difficulty to wean and the, the need some support, with surgical myocardial dysfunction or cardiac output syndrome, cardiac support for non-cardiac surgery, Mechanical bridge to other assisted device, cardiac support uh, following correction of anatomical defects. Uh, absolute contraindication, patient with severe irreversible left ventricle impairment, uh, there is uh, severely impaired, so the anti balloon pump insertion will not provide more hemodynamic support, and the increase in cardiac output only will be 0.5 liter. A patient who has advanced age uh, with no uh, planning for uh, any further uh, intervention, uh, irreversible brain damage, chronic anesthesia, heart disease, aortic uh, dis dissection, uh, uh, the, the, the anti-aortic balloon bump will uh, expand the false lumen and uh, accelerate the dissection. Severe peripheral vascular disease uh, in which we can get uh, easily uh, peripheral vascular access or presence of peripheral vascular axis, which will aggravate more aggravation for uh, the peripheral uh, vascular uh, disease and increasing limb ischemia. A patient with moderate to severe aortic regurge, the presence of the balloon will increase uh, the aortic and diastolic pressure, and it will uh, lead to more regurge and the more pushing of the, from, of the blood from the aorta to uh, left ventricle. In patient with uh, severe sepsis, uh, insertion of anti balloon will exacerbate uh, the hemodynamic condition, uh, will not improve. In patient with aortic aneurysm, uh, the wall of the aorta will be redundant and it will not benefit from inflation and deflation of the balloon. Uh, relative contraindication, if there is uncontrolled coagulopathy and bleeding, left ventricular outflow obstruction, the presence of the balloon will exacerbate or increase this condition. Atherosclerosis uh, will uh, Will ha will have reflection on uh, also increasing the risk for ischemia and have uh, maybe affecting uh, the balloon itself uh, friction in the balloon increasing helium uh, causing helium loss. Any contraindication to anticoagulation? This is uh, for relative contraindication. We can put risk benefit uh, ratio before decide insert or not insert the balloon.
complication of interrupted balloon pump bleeding complication from the site of the insertion may be retroperitoneal bleeding uh, sometimes a vascular complication and limb ischemia uh, visceral ischemia if there is a improper uh, position of the balloon sli slightly low it may include the superior mesenteric artery or including renal artery causing ischemia a uh, major limb ischemia which can all of this can lead to uh, amputation vascular surgery uh, deep venous uh, thrombosis there are many independent risk factors for the major complication, which in the, in, in, in the, in the benchmark uh, it should be 2.5%. Uh, it's commonly our female, peripheral vascular disease. Body surface area are less than uh, 1.6 meter and uh, age uh, uh, greater or equal to 75 years old. All of these are uh, uh, independent risk factors. Patient who are, uh, uh, has uncontrolled diabetes, and the uh, presence of uh, peripheral vascular disease, all of these can increase the risk of um, complication from interaortic balloon pump. Uh, this is a nice video for the insertion for interaortic balloon pump by fluoroscopy. And we should note that uh, we should see the upper part and the lower part of the interaortic balloon pump. At least we should get one abdominal x ray for uh, assess the lower end of interaortic balloon pump. Another uncommon complication, which is helium leak, uh, and this is, can be diagnosed when we see uh, abnormal color uh, inside uh, the balloon, uh, from the balloon. It's not uh, apparent for us. This is the part inside the body, but we should monitor uh, its presence in coloration due, uh, from the part outside the body. Sometimes uh, helium leak occurs due to abrasion in the balloon, due to a thromitus plaque in the aorta. And when this happens, we should immediately remove the balloon uh, outside the body. These are the reference of uh, this lecture. And uh, for more reading about the uh, object, this is an excellent uh, website for more reading. Uh, thank you. And we can see your uh, comments and questions in the comments below.